Transportation District Board of Commissioners meeting for Thursday, September 28, 2023, to order at 9 o'clock on the dock for a change. And we will do the Pledge of Allegiance this Sunday. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Mary, would you take the roll call for us, please? Yeah. Commissioner Smith, I am here. Commissioner McDonald? Here. Commissioner Nino? She is excused. Commissioner Allegria? Uh, present. Commissioner Withers? Here. Commissioner Reed? Here. Commissioner Merrill? Present. Okay, are there any changes to the agenda? Seeing none, I would take a motion to approve. I move to approve the agenda as presented. Okay. Any discussion? Okay, the agenda is approved. And we're down to number five, public comment. Is there any public comment? Let's start with on Zoom. And in our audience, okay, I don't see any public comment. We will move on to the approval of the board minutes. Are there any changes besides the punctuation? I, I would move that we approve the board minutes. Second. Second. Okay. Second. Any discussion, Pamela. Um, on page five, approval of July twenty seventh. Minutes. If there is a misunderstanding, um, what I had asked for is when someone sends comments or letters to the board that it's in the record. So you would say, uh, enter uh, blah blah, whatever was written into the record. So I don't have those papers. So maybe we could do that as a regular practice. If you can't find the, the letters, do you understand what I'm saying? No. Okay. So if someone writes to the board and you, uh, it's part of the record, you enter into the record, you say you enter these letters into the record. So that if someone wants to ever know what, whether these comments have been submitted as an official document, they're in the record. Is that, does that make any? They are in the record and they were entered into the record that day. Oh, okay. That so day when you said that. Um, okay. Was, and, and I just checked in the book and they're in the book with the, with the minutes. Um, however, we had emails that, some emails that I need to get and that I did not oh, receive okay. those. So, so, th so this discussion by me, that is a word I meant. Okay. So just delete it. Okay. All right. Um, if you let me know which emails. That's cool. Kids. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. And then I'll get them to you. Because mm -hmm. I, 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 I don't believe really it. in school. Yeah. Oh, those. Do you still have those? Because those were in a paper. Those were in an envelope. And I didn't get those emailed. Okay. okay. We'll find them. Yeah. Well, when you yes. ask, on page six. Under financial report, uh, there, reader in the future and actually in the present, since Paul is the uh, interim executive director, and also the Paul here is for the uh, audit, so that if you put in his last name and he's the auditor, it reads a little oh. more sense. So, okay. so we can tell which Paul's which. <laughs> okay. So. This Paul's better looking. <laughs> Maybe that's the difference. The good looking Paul. Anything else, Pamela? Okay, anybody else? Okay, Mary, would you take a roll call, please? Commissioner mm -hmm. Smith? Pass. Commissioner McDonald? Yes. Commissioner Labria? Uh, yes. Commissioner Withers? Yes. Commissioner Reed? Yes. Commissioner Merrill? Yes. Thank you. 
Oh, perhaps I do have one comment, which really isn't in the minutes, but with the new Oregon paid leave, that we should probably consider that as extra money that's coming out of the budget. And so I don't know if we plan for that when we mm -hmm. pass the budget. We did. We oh, planned. Okay, we did. Okay, thank you. Okay, we're down to um, reports from the chair and commissioners, number seven. And I can, I'll, I will start this month. I did um, go and talk to Andy. He's the finance director at Clatsop County to see if he could come down and do a little tutorial for the board on finances. And he is not able to work with the board. He could work with Kelly, but he can't work with the board. Don't ask me why. Um, and, and I explained to him that we already have John from Columbia County helping Kelly out. There was a CPA I was going to talk to and um, because of issues beyond our and her control, she's no longer available. So I will keep looking. I am actually going to go to my accountant and see if she could come and spend an hour with us. Only I want her to get my personal taxes done first. <laughs> So that's a little bit on the selfish side, but uh, yeah. So, but I'll keep looking. Um, I actually um, went and talked with Rebecca one day and we went over the finances and I think she has a better understanding. And I also found a report that I think would help all of us. And I've given it to Kelly and she's working to see if she can make it work on our reports. And it actually gives us two extra columns that might give us be a little bit more confusing but one of the extra columns will give us what the full budget was, the year budget, because right now it's broke down by month, and what percentage we have spent <clears throat> or received for that. And I showed that one to you too. So I think that would help us a little bit. So if Kelly can make that report up here, we'll put that in the pack for next month and we'll talk about that a little bit. And then I attended the Northwest Act meeting um there was a couple of things that are concerning odot and odot has a hiring freeze right now they are no longer and they've got four or five empty positions they are no longer going to paint the white line on the shoulder to secondary highways to save some money so those were the biggest things that i thought came out of there and <coughs> I think that's about all I've done this week or this month. Tracy. Um, I attended a uh, retraining. This is the second time through this particular class on ethics and came away with a couple of new items. Um, just be aware that they are redoing uh, <clears throat> the public meeting law notice and operations and that will be a training coming out in January and any any district or entity uh, with a million and a half dollars in budget will be required to take that course and it's from the state so we I'm sure they'll be in touch so uh, that was a really good training I had a couple of small items that I was going to it's a little revision that I wanted to write to, so I will defer that to next meeting. Um, uh, we continue, uh, our uh, Kiwanis Club continues to be involved in the volunteer efforts to uh, put a shelter and specifically in talking with Kelly, we've, we've narrowed it down to the uh, sunset, uh, sunset stop. And so we're going to try to <clears throat> involve that with a volunteer basis of pouring the pad and uh, assembling the, the uh, one of the shelters that we already have in stock. So, so those those patrons in that stock would have uh, a little shelter from the rain. And I can't think of a whole lot more other than that this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Guillermo. Good morning. It's great to be here. Uh, all I have to say, my life is finally settled down. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, you all know I've been working in child welfare for the past 12 years, also the union steward there for the past 12 years. And you know our current building situation, not good. And so it is great to be out of there. Uh, I started, I was supposed to start August 1st, and then because of our short staff, we really changed it. The Department of Administrative Services finally agreed that I could start September 25th. Don't know why, but anyway, uh, so Monday I had my first day at my orientation. And uh, so I'm, it's, uh, it's a relief to be a channel out there and my commitment with the union. I, oh, excuse me, I'm doing a rotation with the SA 503 as a contract specialist for one year. <clears throat> and my home duty station is at home. Uh, and of course, it is rolled most of the things are zero. So, uh, so I feel really good about that. So we'll see you more often. Yes. Right. Maybe more peaceful as well. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Rebecca. Uh, well, I don't really have anything to report uh, specifically other than what we've you know, been working on with the uh, hiring process. And, um, you know, that's, um, it was very encouraging to have good candidates to choose from. Uh, I think the, uh, uh, I commend the staff for organizing that so well and uh, I think that everybody was all hands on deck with that and we got a lot of good response um, from you know community members and uh, in order for us to uh, work on our decision on that. Um, I Yesterday I had an interesting conversation with somebody who's a manager at one of the stores in, in Warrington and um, who you know it, it is in the Costco um, complex and he said that you know I said you know I'm on the board we are you know we we want to get the uh, uh, the lonely bench you know someday you know the ensign uh, bus stop you know that's you know we're we're still still working on that and he said yeah I you know I tried uh, for several months to help one of my employees uh, get to work and back and I finally you know it's all I could do to help out and and she had to um, quit her job and that just was so sad to hear and you know the stories that we've heard in the community of that um, so that was it's a real motivator for us to do our best to to get service more service back on board so I'm, I'm happy to be here and, and we've got our work cut out for us and uh, I'm glad that uh, we're a good team. Thank you, Rebecca. Pamela? Um, I'd like to offer uh, <clears throat> my condolences to Barbara Blue's family. Uh, Barbara Blue uh, served on the uh, budget committee for a number of years and uh, kept uh, abreast of what Sunset was doing and offered suggestions shortly before her death. Yeah. Thank you. And Charles? Uh, <clears throat> I want to thank the staff, uh, Paul and the staff, for seamlessly putting together that, uh, that the whole function of the hiring process. I've, I've been in planning for other organizations, and it's like almost herding cats sometimes. But you, the key thing with herding cats, you, you want to get them where they are, but don't look. Don't want anyone to see you, see the process it takes. And I know it's hard sometimes, but it went seamlessly, got out quicker than I thought, which is always good. And I think we we, we settled on a, a good choice. I thought there's probably two choices, really good choices. And I want to commend the board members who participated. And I do want to ask, and this may be, is there any way we can put a temporary shelter? Something like at, at Ensign Lane. I mean, I, something that we can. I want to approach someone about building us a wooden temporary shelter. I know it's not going to be the, 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 the one we have, but a wood shelter keeps folks out of rain. I mean, I know it won't be our standard shelter, our, our spec shelter, 
But I just want to try and I can give you something because I drove by the other day <laughs> and it's just sad to see folks standing out there and it was raining pretty hard the day of the meeting. So, uh, well, we have a shelter and I, I'm sorry to admit that I'm not sure where we are with the community funding that we were after. Uh, I know that Jennifer has been working to get uh, uh, a labor force to put the slab in. I think it's just a matter of getting the resources to come together. I think most of the leg work is done. Everybody's bought into it. We have a shelter we can use. It's not wood. It's a real permanent shelter. Uh, we just need to get the slab for it. Correct. But you and Jennifer are working together Correct. on that. Yes, so we are We are doing, um, and some of the volunteer labor, we've had some issues. Well, Jennifer, you can speak to this. <laughs> We, yeah. we have issues trying to find the labor availability at this point. Well, Tongue Point has agreed. Tongue Point has agreed to help um, with the labor, you know, the labor side of it, and um, and um, are looking for projects in the county uh, for their students. Um, so, uh, and we've been working on the Sunset Beach one, um, and then Summer Broke, and then you know, and then April, and all of those things came about. So trying to reconnect with Ton Point. They've had some staff turnover or, or job job changes, but then we also started talking about the Ensign Lane, and then I, I realized I've already had um, contact with the county. They've approved Sunset Beach, um, but the one on Highway 101 is ODOT um, State Highway. I will probably have to get approval, um, I believe, through them. That might not be a county. And, Was and there going to be a, a turnout created? They were going to do all of that. Yes, that was a project grant money. We had all that. We, that is no longer. Um, right. That's uh, not on. But well, we could still make what we could make the shelter without having to have the turnout portion of the project. Correct. Because yeah. the, the oh, drivers okay. are already stopping They'll there at the lonely okay. white vent. Yeah. yeah um, we just need, you know, approval, I guess, okay. through the state uh, to, to do, put up a shelter there. Um, Sunset Beach is county. So I've already talked to them about Sunset Beach. And Arla had said that there was some kind of testing that's already been done, so it shouldn't be an issue. Yes. So it shouldn't be an issue. We just need to make sure we've got everything we need. Yeah. So. I, think, I just think it, it looks I mean, we're, we're making we're coming back and making progress, and that's a that's the small things, right? Yeah. Small things suggest that we're you know we're really doing everything we can. And I just think of people standing there, and that's. Totally exposed. There's yeah. no trees or anything. Can't go into the full town of pizza place and wait on your hard glass. Right. But I've just uh, wondered. Yeah. Well, we'll raise that priority. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would like, I mean, I just, uh, Tracy's doing great with the umbrella, but he don't have enough umbrella. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My supply has been limited. Uh, I got, I haven't been working, so uh, yeah. Yeah. I would, I would be appreciative if. If we can you know, somehow find a result for that. Okay. Thank you, Charles. Thank you. Um, on with financials. Kelly? Good morning. Good morning. Um, we finished our forensic audit last month, so everything is in for that. And I'm just waiting for the final report on that. Um, we have received all of our first quarter stiff payments finally um, as of May 1. And we only have a couple of um, outstanding reimbursements from ODOT. Um, 186000 <clears throat> I'm expecting any day. I actually was telling Paul I thought it might have been here on Tuesday, but it's not here yet. So I'm checking every day for it. And it's, I'm, I'm hoping in the next week that that will be here. Um, and then the small uh, $2,400 one should be here anytime I was in contact um, with that part of ODOT, the transportation options part, um, earlier this week. And so that should be coming out anytime. Um, little blurb on our OTIP one, just to kind of give you an update as to where that sits. Um, other than that, any questions for me? We did have a question on page 11, and I think I have this, but I just want to verify. 
um, at the very bottom on the second column there, month to date budget, $70,953. I'm sorry, where are you? That is, we are oh, under budget. I, uh, sorry. We are under budget by that. Is that correct? Yeah, so our, our month to date, the, um, yeah, the budget piece of it is what we budgeted for that month, and that isn't always going to add correctly, and actually it would show that as over budget. It would show it as a, as a negative because our expected income for the month isn't as much as our expected expenses for the month. Um, so that red is going to show us essentially in the negative. Um, <coughs> But we're not sitting in a negative because we had extra funds. They carry, you know, they carry month to month. So that month to that um, budget piece isn't going to look perfect every month. Okay. Some months it'll will have um, more and have the less expenses. And that um, so. But we are still, are we still missing? I don't know if we are not. Still missing that third quarter reimbursement? We are, that's the 186,000 that we're still missing. Um, and the other thing that it doesn't reflect on this report, but we received um, the last bit of our stick payment was in September, September 1st, we received that last 123,000, I think it was, um, for stick. So it doesn't show in our, um, August income, but it'll show next month. So we did get our fourth quarter, but we didn't get our third quarter. Correct. Okay. ODOC had to make some changes. Mm -hmm. I don't know what. Okay. Um, and so we're just waiting for that to process through. And I think that's all I had. Pamela? So what is on page nine under available balances, and you have ODOC funding 121000 plus? Uh, loan funding, what does that mean? That was the funds that we received from the loan from ODOT that we still have that we haven't so had to spend left yet. over, left over, okay. And then, okay, then on page 15, we owe AccuFund. I mean, we have, yes, we owe Acme Fund $5,313. Is that what we normally pay? It's a quarterly payment. Quarterly? Yes. I'm speaking of uh, Fred Acme Fund. I was wondering if we could kind of document, or we could, or you could, uh, what lines of avenue we have pursued to find help or your problems. So when, if they're so insurmountable, then we have a record of uh, why it's insurmountable and give us the reason for pursuing another system. But if it, if it turns out there are other reasons other than it's whatever you want to call it, difficult, shall we say. Um, and what, because we can't go on without having a fund balance that's going to hurt us with a lot of people. So, uh, and, and what you know is by having this, maybe all of us can offer some other pursuits because you've you've looked at it so often that I'm sure you go, I don't want to see active fund ever again. But we need to resolve this right. because uh, it's a long long term. And we're working on getting. Everything updated and resolved, and so that it's all uh, completely accurate. Um, and so, as that moves on, um, I may actually find that AccuFund does what it's supposed to do, how it's supposed to do it, when it's all implemented properly and everything is ran accordingly. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm, I have to wait until we get everything fixed before I can really, you know, take a good look at that. So in terms of John, is, is he still working with you? Absolutely. Uh, with John the, and um, our auditor, Paul, we're all working collectively together to okay. get everything fixed. Okay. So like if we could have an update because
is this uh, is Paul's finishing up our 22 audit. Mm -hmm. um, I had a couple of questions for him, and so I'm just waiting for him to um, go back and look at that and finish that. And once we have the 22 audit finished, and I make all of the any adjustments that need to be made, I'm hopeful that at that point that will give us a clean slate to be able to to go from. Okay, so if you document this, then we can justify or solve. And then the last question is, uh, on page 17, I may not be reading this right. That's all I see. So we have an upgrade of Zoom, 4,000 plus. We did. <laughs> we made some changes to our Zoom account um, so that we would have better Zoom access, uh, mm -hmm. better equipment, uh, things would run easier so that mm -hmm. um, every month that we come in to have a meeting that it wasn't to hold our breath and hope it works today. Mm -hmm. um, so we went ahead and went with that upgrade and made those changes. It also gives all of us um, access to have like our own Zoom account. So if we needed to hold a meeting that we needed to have recorded or those kinds of things, it gives us um, those kinds of capabilities. Okay, and I lied. I have two more quick questions. In terms of uh, when, is there a definite date, not date, but time period that the mass transit, blah, blah, is uh, received? Mass transit is received quarterly. Quarterly, okay. The first month of the quarter. And then uh, the timber sales. It's quarterly as well. And it's when they get the funds, we get the funds. Right, right, okay. Thank you. I did, go ahead. Okay, excuse me. Um, can you go back about active funds? So see if I got this right, is that once the audit is done and once you feel that you know you're entering everything uh as as needed um you're still going to evaluate whether or not it's a good system and what did we say about the other one that was kind of next in line that was of interest is that it was cost prohibitive is that right it was my understanding that when um the district changed over to AccuFund, the other system that they liked was quite a bit more expensive. Um, I, my plan over the, the biennium, because that's our funding period for that, is to get in contact with other agencies um, and do some other research in that aspect. Um, when I had gone to a couple of different conferences, I had talked to uh, a company called Cassell, um, and they seemed to have some pretty good programs and ideas and, and things like that. And I believe that Cassell had actually come out and given a presentation uh, before we had switched to AccuFund. So <coughs> loop back to that and then just see what some of the other districts are using and, and see if I can find something that would, that would be better suitable for us. Um, I also wanted to have the payroll piece to it um, and not just like a check the box added on payroll module i would like it to to really have a comprehensive yeah. payroll now is uh what is john using in columbia county they use a county um so it's not it's a bigger more robust system okay. yeah because right. he's part of the county and not just a district okay well i hope that you know that well it'd be great if AccuFund worked but um if not you know I, I think we need to go elsewhere. Yeah. And I totally plan to look and see what else is out there because if I can find something that's more user friendly and um, you know still gives us everything that we need, then I will look to change that. Okay, thank you. I'm going to let Charles go since you've already had one chance. Uh, sounds to me like you're saying that AccuFund may be fine once we figure out what's expected of us and what's expected of them, and perhaps they've been getting. You know, it added garbage in, garbage out. So maybe they have not been getting what they need. And conversely, we've not been getting what we need. The easiest process to me sounds like if we can make them work for us, that we stay where we are, because we're already in place. We know what they are. Uh, so I would hope you could figure that out and uh, and stay where we are, because it's difficult to make it a change in, in the software in the, middle of, you know, in the middle of changing voices in the middle of the race, right? Yes. So it's easier to do that. And lastly, 
I think for those who may not understand, when they hear it, we had our June, our 2022 audit, they think, Jesus, was, wasn't it done in December? So I think maybe for the public, they should understand that the 22 year ended in July. Exactly. So it doesn't seem like we've been sitting around eight months waiting on the gym. Right. Yeah, 2022 numbers. Thank you. Thank you, Charles. And Pamela? Are there any transit uh, centers that are using AccuFund or some other local? AccuFund says that there are other transit districts that, that use their system. I just haven't uh, gathered that information to be able to reach out to them to see how it works or doesn't work for them. And so that would be pursued when you have Absolutely. a spare moment? Yes. <laughs> I'm hoping now that the forensic audit part is done, things are kind of settling and we're coming back here that I'll have a chance to breathe and look to make some of these changes. Thank you. One more comment or a question is that give us a ballpark when you think that you'll know one way or the other as to if we're going to need to go to another system. Oh, absolutely. Or, you know, do you have an idea now, like end of the year, first quarter? Um, not, it won't happen this fiscal year. Thank you. I did have one more question, sorry. <laughs> On page 12. On the parking spaces, and there was a couple other things that kind of looked like this. You have um, parking space 12 and parking space 12. They're, they're currently seven, um, 4750, but they're 30 days behind. Is there any way to put those together, or do they all have to be separate? They're like all that? separate because it's separate months. Okay. It shows it by uh, each month. Okay, I kind of thought that was going to be the answer, but because it would be easier for me to read if number 12 was all on one line and right. currently they owe this and they're this far behind. Right. Okay. I understand. All right. That's all I have. Charles, you have another one? No, it's, it's lazy sign. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If there's no more questions on the finance, I will ask Mary to enter the finance report into our minutes. And we're down to number nine, continued business, and I don't see any there. So we'll go down to number 10, which brings us to new business and personnel policies. Ta da! So they're done. <laughs> 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 anyway, um, just so these um, personnel policies have been um, vetted and they've been looked at by SDAO. Um, and I've got uh, Monica's comments back. I'm going to wait till I get um, the uh, comments from uh, our conversation with um, HR Answers. They do it as a, it's not a totally free service. We are going to have to pay some to have them do it. So it's going to take quite a bit of time, but that's pretty <coughs> typical for, um, for our brand new personal policies. I did use their template. I added things that are specific um, to our district that had already been in our personnel policies. Um, some things may be shortened up, like the FMLA, OFLA. We may um, shorten those up, but I know that when HR answers in their government handbook um, draft policy that was my template, they kind of listed it all out. But we may not have to go into that much detail. So shortening this up is, I would love that. But we wanted to make them pretty precise and clear because if you run into employee issues, um, you really need to be able to defend why they can or cannot do something. So, anyway, any questions? Yes. <laughs> no, I do. I didn't get through all of them because we had a busy week. But um, section 128, so. I look at the at will, we do have a union, so to, and a union member can't just be terminated for no cause. But, but this is not um, the CBA. This is um, where is it? Where is it? Okay. To, uh, to 28, page 28 yeah. of ours. Oh, page 28. It's like, I'm really, oh, on, okay. really close to the beginning. Yeah. Um, yeah, I got it. So this is for all of our non-represented employees. And basically, um, they go by 
they go by both the represented and the non represented. But for represented employees, the CBA, collective bargaining agreement, trumps okay. these. So, but we have to have this in there for our um, non represented. Okay. I just wanted to clarify that. Mm -hmm. So that the contract does trump the policies. Absolutely. Okay. Anybody? Rebecca, I think you're going to put your sign up. Yeah, um, you know, I've taken a uh, fairly good look at this, but as I, I think I was mentioning to Debbie before the meeting, is that um, is, as things do come up, is this, uh, what is the process for modifying the Oh, uh, this is a document. document. So as new laws or policies are, well, take the um, lactation policy. I mean, you find a place to put it in here, you know, or our paid leave that just came up. You, you know, you you find where it fits within the categories, and then you add it, change your um, um, your pages, page numbers, whatever. What What is the process for for making those changes? Uh, is that coming before the board, or is that the, uh, is that from your department? Well, um, I, I, I would probably find out about it first, or, you know, whoever hears about it, maybe the executive director would have, um, you know, uh, uh, somehow had heard about it before I did. And but generally, I mean, all the things I have coming in on my email every day, I, you know, look for new things that are, and um, SDAO is awesome um, with keeping us up to date on all the new policies. In fact, and then HR Answers, most of the time will write a policy for that particular new uh, law or policy that has come about. So they keep us all current. And then I would just insert it where it belongs. But the um, executive director has the authority to uh, to implement that change into the personnel policy. And if it's noteworthy, you know, certainly for, for us and at your discretion, I mean, I hope that we can, you know, hear about this too, so oh. that we can Make a notation in as well. Yes, I'd be happy to, just like with the paid leave um, that I brought before you to let you know that this is coming down the pike and that it's going to become part of our policy. Yeah. Okay. Staff will always share policies that they develop with the board uh, simply as a matter of courtesy, if nothing yes. else. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that the district will, will do that it hasn't done in the past is do a regular review of policies now that we have a current set uh, and I don't know exactly what every two years every two years are we going to have a committee or are you going to do it uh, um well the point is that they will they won't sit like the last set did for 10 years with no attention they'll be looked at and kept current and the, and the thing is is that you know I would review them um and but at that time you send them I would send them again to SDAO or, you know, just for another review every two years. Yeah. I appreciate that. The nature answers. Yeah. I think Charles yes. is first. Is the uh, federal uh, FMLA the same as the Oregon version of it, or are they very different? No, Oregon, well, Oregon it has, um, it has more uh, benefits. Then family medical leave. Also, you have to have you have to have twenty five people, and all the criteria have to be approved for one hundred eighty days and different things like that. Um, FMLA is the federal, yeah. and uh, they you have to have over fifty employees. So most of the time, um, SETB did not qualify for FMLA, uh, but I but we were really close with forty five employees. So um, I don't I think that. And I will talk to <clears throat> SDAO and HR answers about leaving it in here because I know Monica said maybe you don't have to have that in there since you're not eligible. However, when we do become eligible, right. rather than having to insert it back in, it's kind of one of those things that's mandatory. That's what I was getting at. We will ultimately be, we're not there now, obviously, but we will be. And my next question is your contact with the furlough driver. Are you hear from any of them? Um, um, you know, I just made phone calls because <laughs> we are um, hiring some back. And so actually, and then I, I was updating the temp list for the fixed route. And um, 
because we know who our fair transit are. So I call them all of all of them to you see do. where they. Yeah, I, I do. Yeah. Tell them we are. We are discerned. Oh yes, and I know, and there are a few who have taken jobs and won't be coming back. And there's our CBL down the tube, which is really heartbreaking. Yeah. So we really want to try. I mean, I'm so happy we're able to hire um, four more back right now, but still, I mean, there was a lot more than that on yeah. the list. But yeah. Thank you. You're welcome, Pamela. On uh, page twenty-eight. Uh, it states on the second paragraph of the little appointment. Page, page number. 28. 28. Uh, that the executive director at will does not apply to the executive director. He is, um, how can he I? He has an employment contract. All the terms for his employment or her employment covered in that contract. Is that standard or is that particular? You know, Contractual takes on. Yeah, and I believe in his agreement. Um, it uh, well is stated in that. I'm pretty sure I don't have it in front of me, but I think that is stated there. So that doesn't violate the at will Morgan statute. No, I think it's in his contract. Actually, I can look when I get that. It is. Yeah, it, it is. is. Yeah. Sure. And. Um, in terms of, and this is just, you know, things have changed so much under equal employment. So, so you have sex, sexual orientation, gender identity, genetic information. Um, is some of that repetitive or not? Um, no, it's not. Okay. Yeah. Is the Gina the genetic information? I mean, you know. They have blood pressure, or they're this, or they're that, or they have a prone to whatever. Then you know that could make a discrimination determination, and that's why it's um, that's it's not allowed. Okay, thank you. But they're not repetitive. No. Okay. One more question: When there are new policies or changes in a policy, how do the employees get notified of that? How they are distributed. Distributed to okay. all the employees on okay. a certain date, and yeah. Uh, right. Do the employees sign for those? Huh? Do the employees sign that well, they've received or read them? Yes. Yeah, and yeah, that's right. They do have yeah. a uh, okay. form that they return to me. Yeah. Okay. I think that's. <laughs> and I don't think we need to take any action on this. Nope. Okay. Good. And when they're completed, I will uh, present each one of you with a final. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. And we will move on to board training. Okay. Number 10 B.
need to understand some of the financial processes and principles that drive our reports. So uh, if that hasn't been distributed, I'll see that it gets out within the next week. And I, I did get a copy of it through email, and I kind of skimmed through it, and it looks like it will be something that's really good. And I don't know if we want to say, okay, this month we're going to do chapters two and three on our own and report back how we're doing, or if we just want to go on our own and go through it. So if you, if you folks want to kind of think about it, maybe we'll talk about it again at our next meeting and see if anybody's had a chance to start it and how they like it so far. Um, and I'm commending Tracy because he's going out and looking up some of these SDAL trainings that he's been able to take, and I appreciate him doing that. I would love to get into that. Also, I've been busy with a lot of other things right now, but hopefully soon things will settle down where I can start doing those too. So um, there hard, hard copies or just um, you you can print it out. This this one that. Took 160 pages? That's why I didn't print or it Or you can read it online. You don't have to print it. But it doesn't make sense to print, you know, 20 copies of yeah. that many pages. So, because my first thought was, I'm going to print this out, then I can, but then I looked at how many pages it was, and it was even too many for me to print out for myself. I like the, the idea that uh, we, we get a little bit of time and make a commitment to, to looking through it. And then taking notes so that we can have some talking points to, to go over things that don't make sense. Maybe that's the best approach. Okay. And and I, I wanted to comment that SDAO will work with you um, uh, if you specifically ask for certain trainings. They will, if they don't have it available at that time, they will put it in record and then follow up with it when they have an instructor or a qualified person to, to give you that. So um, I went back into the academy and started the academy stuff. So. Yeah. I say something? Yes. Um, I don't know if you, the board received you personally this information, but the SDO, the 2024 SDO annual conference is going to be in Seaside this year. And that's going to be in February, um, from February 9th to 11th. And I, I will send you the information sheet. So that's coming up, which is always good training. And then we definitely have board training. I, I, you know, we have a day of board training. So well, I'll, 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 be, I'll be attending. Yes, I'll be. it's wonderful when it's in Seaside. Oh, yeah. And there, there is registration fees for that. Yeah. We'll look at that and see if our budget. But no travels. You have no, no travel, hotels. no hotels. So maybe we we'll look into the budget and see if we've got any money we can. Do you get know offhand how much registration usually is? Whole conference. Two thirty five for a whole conference. Yeah. Two thirty five per person. What about Zoom? Because sometimes Zoom's a little bit different. Or are they doing a phone Zoom? No Zoom. I don't mention any. Uh, no. I don't see that. Yeah, scholarships. I don't understand that as well. Like this is just the first, this is just the first, you know, pickler. Get ready. Mm -hmm. so, okay. okay. I'll look at, I'll look into that and let you guys know. Just just a comment. First sort of first conference that I attended at Seaside for SDAO, I was an employee of the uh, food service people, so <laughs> I got to observe quite a lot. Also in your packet on pages 154 and 155, it's ODOT trainings that are coming up in the dates. And if, if I'm right, these are also by Zoom, and there's no cost to those. So um, the first one is on financial man management for transit providers. That's December 12th and 13th. And then in January, it's Americans with Disability Compliance. And in January, no date yet, civil rights and Title IV uh, compliance. So six. we've got six, sorry. So we've got a lot of, um, I can never remember this before. After. A lot of different trainings we can 
we have the opportunity to take advantage of it. Go ahead, Is there one training you would recommend versus the other? Um, I guess the one that makes more logic sense to me is financial management. <laughs> that's probably something that we should all be looking at. Yes. Yeah. For the ADA uh, and Title VI compliance, um, is that something you, you already uh, do, uh, Sue, for your position? Do you keep uh, up to date on those two types of trainings for your for your position? Yes. The uh, ADA and uh, Civil Rights Title VI? Uh -huh. Ability. Okay. And Jason, too, which is. Okay. Uh, so we do have representatives here that I'll be sitting down now are trained in that. Okay. Two sides of that. One is, one is employees, and the other side is who we. Who we serve. So there's it's kind of close science. Jason is on that. Yeah. Okay. okay. I just have one question in terms of it says um, on page 154 at the bottom um, the PD uh, Public Transportation Division, blah, blah, each agency is required to send at least one person uh, for each of these trainings. Hmm. Okay. This is uh, for your information. Okay. Well, and I kind of plan on attending all of them, so we'll look at that. Okay. Okay. So nothing else on training. We will move on to. Oh, this is university. Restored routes. Well, I don't want to speak too much this morning, so I'm going to ask our operations officer right. to talk about the routes. Um, I guess I could say, by way of introduction to the process, that we've been working uh, from a financial perspective to assess what additional services we can restore. And uh, Jennifer and Kelly have been working uh, very hard on this. Jason supporting the effort. Uh, and what Jennifer's going to present this morning is our current status of where we want to go with restoring service. Good morning, commissioners. Um, it wasn't included in your packet, but I did give you this morning um, a packet with the front page is yellow and it says Route 101. And, that, and this page is what we're currently running right now, uh, Monday through Friday, the yellow. And it says Route 101. So as you already know that in early May, uh, ODOT asked us to uh, reinstate minimum service. Um, and this being one is the Route 101. In operations, we call it the monster because it travels from Emerald Heights, which is the east side of Astoria, and it goes all the way down to Cannon Beach. Four loops, three hour loops, um, an AM shift and a PM shift, Monday through Friday. So uh, it, does minimal service in each location, but it is service, and it's um, you know we're glad that our uh, buses are on the road. Um, and then on the Saturday and Sunday, we do have Pacific Connector, and that just does the transit center, Australia Transit Center here. Saturday to Sunday, it's a connector; it just shoots straight down. You know, has minimal stops, Fred Myers, Seaside Cinema, down into Cannon Beach, and then and then back. So um, one bus a day. That's currently what we're serving right now, one bus a day, um, seven days a week. Um, so then we were given parameters to hopefully restore service and what would that look like? And so with a team, uh, as Paul said, Jason, Kelly, Paul, uh, Rick, who's our uh, operations supervisor, we met together, we came up with two plans and I presented those to Paul and Kelly last week. We looked at them financially and so we're proud to say that on October 9th, uh, we're going to bring back the Route 10 um, and the Route 20. The Route 10 <clears throat> is going to be your page number two. And mind you, it does say draft. Uh, minimal tweaks, hopefully between now and um, tomorrow, because we do need to get the word out. But um, the Route 10 with those parameters and the meet our 
you know, stay within um, our financial status. Um, it will start at Warrington Mini Mart at 9.05 and end at Mini Mart at 5.03. And then how it's on? Warrington Mini Mart. It's down by? It's on Main Street. Main Street. Yes. Yeah. Right at the corner there. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then the Route 20, which is your page two, um, okay. is Seaside down to Cannon Beach. Okay. <laughs> and these two routes are a Monday through Friday service. Um, because we're going to reinstate this Route 10 and this Route 20, uh, we will be changing the Route 101, um, which is page on page 30. So and so this is going to the center again. As as Correct. Correct. So the Route 101, not the one that we're currently doing, which is the first page, the Route 101 will change. Um, and not do Emerald Heights, it'll just do as it did before, Transit Center, down to Seaside, not, not include Cannon Beach, and then come back. Again, these are all drafts. Um, we're tweaking, we're still doing little changes. What can we do here? Where can we go there? Um, and so constant communication, but we do need to get this online. We do need to get it on the shelters. We do need to make it public uh, ASAP. So. Um, a lot of work at hand right now. Um, all routes, all the routes will start at Warrington Mini Mart and end at Warrington Mini Mart. And this will give um, some added service into Warrington. It also gives us a chance to count it as revenue miles. Revenue miles is what we can uh, report on our ODOT um, uh, and other reporting to uh, revenue service from one stop. Um, and driver, driver hours as revenue, uh, and we can start counting those. And the most important thing is service. We have a lot of Warrington riders, and so they can get on at Warrington Mini Mart, which is like not even a half a mile from operations. Uh, they can get right on the bus and either get to Fred Myers or get to Astoria and or transfer and get to Seaside and or down to Cannon Beach. So we can still access, um, give them access. So again, oh, yes. First run, they could get on at the mini mart and ride to Camp Beach. On Route 20. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So back to Route 10. I just kind of want to give you a little bit more intimate knowledge on where we're going with this. Route 10, uh, you'll notice that it starts at Warrington Mini Mart at 905. Draft, just <laughs> it's still a work in progress and ends at 503. This driver, it'll be one driver, one shift an eight hour day with an hour lunch. Um, they'll have lunch, It'll uh, their lunch will be here at the Astoria Transit Center. And then they're free to go where they would like to go. They, the bus will stay and then they'll be resumed service um, at 1.30, the 10. Yeah, I'm sorry. So they'll have lunch presumably around 12.30 to 1.30 and then do three more loops. Um, I left Merck's campus, or we all chose to leave Merck's campus on here. You'll see it's about a quarter of the way down in the stops, Merck's campus. We used to service it uh, three times a day. Um, it has an asterisk. We're going to ask that we're going to notify the college. We'll go down to Merck's campus, put, put postings up there that they can call in um, if needed a ride uh, at the college or at the Merck's campus. Or they, as they get on the bus, they'll let the driver know, I need to be dropped off at Merck's. This is similar to the camp where I need to stop now. Yes, and that is, yes, very okay. true. And that's what we're currently doing on the Route 101 uh, for Camp Raelia. So the riders call in to the transit center. They let the uh, awesome. transportation support <laughs> specialist know in the front office that I need a pickup at Camp Raelia. I'm going northbound or southbound. We relay that message to the driver and then they go in whichever loop that is. So we're gonna do that same thing. Um, and then it's, um, we're gonna try this, see how it works. Um, Jason and I talked this morning, and if we see that it's um, this, this school year, it's a, a high need, maybe we just end up adding it into the route. So this, all these routes are fluid, and, uh, and it gives the students more, or staff more, opportunity to get to and from Merck's campus. 
we know that there are some uh, local people that are live down there and or aren't at Merck's campus that need service also. So we're leaving that opportunity up to the, the community. So we're going to do that. And I will notate that it's all in asterisks. We uh, wanted to be uh, respectful uh, to visually impaired. Um, it's a training that a lot of us have done as, as staff through Easter Seals to be conscious about um, colorblind, not being able to read it because it's in certain colors. So um, I'm gonna leave it all black. Uh, asterisks hopefully uh, will know that, notate that that is a call in, um, that we're not going there. I left the time, time stops out. Um, and then Stephanie or whoever the staff is that's working at the transit center that day, we'll just let them know the driver will be there about 9.32 or, you know, that, that time. So small changes, big changes for us. <laughs> yes, Rebecca. Uh, question, uh, Jennifer. So um, you'll use a robust means of getting this message out to the public. Yes. You have a plan for that? Yes. Okay. I just out of the blue here. What what would that be? Yes. Yeah, so that was uh, we're going to. So we realize that there are going to be big changes, uh, big changes for employees, big changes for our community, big changes for our riders in a very short amount of time. Eleven days we're going to start these routes, and so um, for the next few months, we are as many of us. We are short staff, but we are going to ride routes. We are going to ride the routes. We are going to talk to writers. We're going to talk to uh, those that affect it, like the college, Mertz campus, um, Seaside Hospital, and give as much information out as we can and educate um, how to call in, how to ask that on-demand uh, ride, um, and get feedback. Because like I said, these are fluid. Um, we are open to make changes and adjustments as we need them. Um, these aren't hard stones. As even though they're print, we don't want them to be hard stone, but we do have parameters we have to stay in. Um, financially, we need to be um, conscious of uh, where we're at. And so there is a limit on what we can do. There's a lot that we want to do. Um, right, I understand that. You know, are there some really uh, large employers that where we you could um, Send that, put out some, you know, half sheet flyers, to deliver them or something. I, I don't know. It's like, I know you've really been thinking about I, the idea of actually going on the rides and talking to riders is really, you know, meeting them the, where they really are, you right. know, finding those riders. Yeah. But I'm just wondering if there's um, employers that could be alerted that a lot of knowing where a lot of uh, people ride the bus to and from larger employer. Right, and I know Paul's been talking to Cannon Beach, uh, so we're in communication with them um, as far as their ridership needs. There are a couple of things. I, I wish that you would speak to what you're doing with, with the transition of the 101. Yes. Because that partially addresses this question. Yes. And the other thing I was going to talk about later, and I still will, but our website is down either still or again. And so it kind of limits uh, an avenue that we used to use to get this information out. But I'll go into more detail on that later. You know, the, the, um, uh, the different uh, chambers of commerce, I think, would be an opportunity to um, provide some information for them because that's that many businesses they could spread a word about, about it. So right. usually they meet once a week. Right. Mary has great contacts. This is something she is stellar at. Okay. <laughs> she uh, really gets those um, schedules out, keeps them updated, uh, is in great communication with uh, with all of those, the visitor okay. centers and yeah, and uh, hospitals and clinics and um, we do. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. <laughs> we're we're, we're yeah. Schools, yeah. Hotels, yes. employers, chambers, newspapers. Radio, first you do this and then the next, you know, but first we'll do a press release, I hope, and let everybody know. Okay, great. Look forward. That's good to know. Yeah. I wish we could put them in the paper, but boy, it's expensive to have an ad that would accommodate the schedules, but my, Well, maybe we'll my, get an article in the paper. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, if it's newsly, they usually put it in the paper if it's newsly. Yeah, they sure do. Um, moving on to the Route 20, um, let's see, yes. How close do we get to Washington High School? Those students wrote us that time about, we don't get very close to it on any of this yet. No, we don't. Okay. Unfortunately, we don't. All right. Uh, the Route 20 is um, Seaside Cannon Beach service. We're going to start at Warrington Mini Mart, end at Warrington Mini Mart at the end of ship. This is six loops. It does have a four hour layover in order to meet the needs of those that live and work Cannon Beach Seaside. Um, I've talked to the rider or the drivers, excuse me. They know their riders very well um, and they're, they're very supportive of this four hour split. Uh, we do have a couple, probably two of our now seven fixed route drivers that live down in the seaside area um, so that, you know, they have family and or ability to get home for that four hour sl uh, split if needed. Um, but the bus will stay down in South County uh, to start that later, the last three loops of the day. Where's the split? The day. split is 10 o'clock in the morning till 2 o'clock in the afternoon. You know, just start, start the route again at yeah. 2 from south heading back north. Yes. Okay. And um, they'll head down towards Cannon oh, Beach. Nice. Yeah, it's yeah. Seaside Cinema down to Cannon Beach and then come back to Seaside okay. Cinema. Gotcha. Um, and then here, this route usually does the Seaside Hospital. It used to go into Seaside Hospital and come out with very few ridership. So we're going to make this one also an on-demand like Mertz and like Camp Rialia. So we put asterisks um, next to Seaside Hospital when somebody calls uh, here at Astoria Transit Center. Uh, then the driver um, can go in and pick up that rider when we're going by. And that would be coming back from Cannon Beach. They will go down Avenue S, down Wahana to Broadway, and that is when we'll be passing the Seaside Hospital. So then they'll, if they've gotten a call, they'll jet into the Seaside Hospital shelter, pick up the, the call, and then take them to the Seaside Cinemas as far north as they can get on the Route 20. That route is now going to come up Broadway, go behind, go down Lincoln behind Safeway and Seaside down Avenue F and then come back up Highway 101 to hit McDonald's. It's a, big, it's a major bus stop for us. And then go to Seaside Cinema and hopefully make a connection or two or three with the 101. Because again, with the parameters, uh, these are all eight hour shifts um, with layovers and lunches. Um, you know, we're hoping to make more connections than, than, than not. Um, and we count a connection as about a 15 to 20 minute um, span between the two routes. So, um, so that is the Route 20. And again, it's fluid. If we see that Seaside Hospital is a high call, maybe we end up just going in there every loop um, or every other loop, whatever that might look like. And again, talking to writers and the Seaside staff. Seaside Hospital staff on um, what they are seeing and what they are hearing. So, very exciting. Thank you for the, yeah. all the hard work. Oh, I have more. <laughs> if you want to hear the more? No, no, I guess. <laughs> we're so excited. In. We're. I mean, as we've been working on it. Yeah. Uh, so the new, the current 101, as as you see, is on the very front. It's yellow. It's our it's our monster route. With these ten, the route ten and the twenty. It, it will be doing the 10 Emerald Heights, Astoria area, the 20 is going to now do the Cannon Beach, Seaside area. So there's no need for 101 to do those. So we're now going to take it back, reinstate it back down to Astoria Transit Center um, to Seaside Cinema. And that will hopefully get us enough loops and more connections and more service to Freddy's, to Astoria Transit Center and back to the cinema. Um, rather than the three monster loops, four monster loops that we're doing now. So um, it, uh, this one also will start at Warrington Mini Mart. It is an AM shift and then we'll have a PM shift driver, uh, four, uh, four loops in the, uh, for the AM driver and then four loops for the PM driver. They have 30 minute lunches. 
the routes um, you'll notice on here in the middle it says stop code it's in white uh, we're adding this each bus shelter has a stop code uh, there's an app that the rider can use they'll punch in the stop, stop code and or call um, and it tells them when the bus will be there so we're adding the stop codes to the route sheet so then a rider only needs the one sheet rather than two or memorize their stop codes for those and or waiting to get to the shelter to see the stop code and the time that the that the system tells the rider is the, is the actual real time it's not the schedule time so yeah. it, it's very helpful yeah and i've used that in trimat and it works it's very helpful and then again 101 has camp Ryalia. that also we're going to keep it as an on request and on demand um, stop we we realize the clinic will eventually be moving here soon i believe uh to over by astoria safeway um, but we're still going to leave that there's residents that live in the area a uh, restaurant that some we have some writers that go out to the camp Ryalia restaurant so we just figured we'd still leave that there um, and we decided to leave this time stop stops um, i didn't want to take away the time because for, for highway 101 we need as much time to get from uh, stop a to stop b and if we can eat up those nine minutes and we don't and don't happen to have to go to camp Riley uh, uh more times than not we we needed those nine minutes to stay on schedule um so and then if the Pacific Connector, which is the last, it hasn't changed much, if at all. I just took the added summers, summer travel time out. Um, and again, this is an AM driver and a PM, a PM driver. The AM driver drives till about one o'clock. They're gonna do shift change at Warrant to Mini Mart. So there's another Mini Mart um, um, service. And then the PM driver will drive till about 8.15. Um, and the PM driver has a 30 minute lunch. So we are going to service the Warrington Mini Mart 11 times between these routes, um, and that's Fred Myers to the Mini Mart. Uh, Rick, the operations supervisor, we went over, and this is, sorry, Paul, I'm just letting you know because things change so fast. He asked me, how are we going to get from Fred Myers to the Mini Mart when the bus is pointed towards Highway 101? And I say, good call, Rick. <laughs> So we are going to, to add service, we have, there's a new um, apartment complex, Trillium Apartments, over behind, and I believe you guys talked about this at the last board meeting, it's over behind Home Depot. So yes. we That's decided true. to go from Fred Myers, turn on a Oregon oh, Crest, it's called Fort Stevens Highway Spur, yeah. Yeah. and we're going to go um, past Ocean Crest, past Trillium Apartments, to the stop sign where the Warrington High School, old high school, old armies is to your left. We'll be at that stop sign and we'll turn right to go to the mini mart. We'll give some service to the, and again, it's fluid. We'll see if we get um, added ridership, um, able to get people home. And a sizable um, complex. So. Yeah. Even a new part of the trillions. So we'll put the new stop <clears throat> Yes, for fixed route. Yes, we yeah. currently service it for ADA paratransit. And so it will give them um, added service um, also uh, if they choose to um, use fixed route because it gives them uh, more options and more freedom in their schedule. Jason? It's a flag stop, right? Yes, it is a flag stop. Thank you. So the rider will have to be out on the highway on the correct side of the road, you know, waving the driver down, uh, be reflective and in early mornings and late evenings uh, so that you can be seen so um, and, and it will be new for our drivers to you know to go down that street but we are going to be doing training uh, before the new routes start uh, we have turn by turns printed for the drivers because there are some other like i talked about trying to get to a seaside mcdonald's some a different change there's a change in there and getting accessing mcdonald's on our routes um i wanted to add that we realize that warrenton route 15 warrenton hammond service isn't part of our reinstating at this time um with the parameters it only allowed us to add the route 10 and 20 back right now um but with the plan that we are going to look and continue to look at adding route 15 
in three to six months looking and adding maybe, a, you know, or maybe the other routes, adjusting them and afford us some time, more service, whatever that might look like. Um, but yes, Route 15 is not forgotten. <laughs> it is going, you know, it's going to continue to be on our, on our radar. Any questions? Yes. Uh, clarification, what is meant by, uh, uh, let's see, hold on here, revenue miles. Revenue miles, can we want to, <laughs> um, go ahead. That'll be the go. So as we, as we do our reporting, um, our revenue miles are uh, from stop to stop. So when we could possibly have riders on the bus versus the deadhead um, from the, from ops to our first stop or from our last stop back to ops. So it's the time in which we could actually have riders on the bus. Oh, thank you. One more easy one. Is the stop code for the phone app, is, is there a charge for that? No, there isn't. Okay. I don't believe so. The transit app? No. Right, no, there's no. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Can I? Tracy? So, following up on that, in the future, is there a thought of basing, particularly Route 20, since you <coughs> mentioned that we have seaside resident drivers in that or seaside, <coughs> South County drivers, if, if there would be a possibility with our IGA partner in the South County to positioning one of the buses to start there. You know, all of these things can be on the table at some point. Okay. But right now we're taking small bites, small steps. I understand that. Yeah. Uh, and we have, to, we have to operate under these schedules for a while to accurately determine what it will cost us. Because our, our funding is fixed. We know what we've got coming the rest of the year. We better not exceed that. Um, but, you know, we've talked about that over the years, and, yeah. and it would be great uh, if the money will support it uh, and the, the ridership is served by it. Hey, Jason? Yeah, um, the 101, how are, are we easing out of the Thank notice? You. Yeah, okay, there you go. <laughs> Speaking of this. <laughs> how did I know? Thank you so much. Oh, okay. So I'm glad you said that. So, with bringing back the Route 10 and reinstating Route 20, our riders, our community, <laughs> their employers, uh, everybody has re had to readjust um, to our Monster 101. They've had to alter <laughs> to that. And I, um, we uh, collectively looked at that and said, what are we, how, you know, how can we do this again four months later is uh, up in what they are currently adjusted to because you'll notice that Route 101 right now currently goes through Emerald Heights uh, in the early morning, about 6.15. That is a Route 10 um, area clear out at the east end of, the, of town. Route 10 will be, be not even be in Emerald Heights until 9.15ish, you know, so yeah, 9.30 actually. And so I, uh, we have decided to continue to do the Monster 101, the route that is currently in service Monday through Friday. It's going to serve um, this route until November 1st. And we're going to do the 10 and the 20. The new one, Route 101 uh, will begin its service on November, on November 1st so okay. that people can adjust to the schedule right. and we will continually so if route 10 and 20 and the and the current 101 kind of cross paths in canon bg cross paths currently in emerald heights at least their service and we have not taken that service away gotcha. um okay. and so people have time uh not, not not 11 days but a month to adjust to um to the the schedules that we're putting out you know, normally we would announce service 30 or 60 days ahead, and we wouldn't have to take that step. But, you know, we got our funding from ODOT so late in, in our planning uh, that we, we were already behind where, I, where we all feel that we should have been. So when we got our funding, we picked October 9th 
Actually, I think we started with October 2nd or something. <laughs> we slipped it to October 9th because we just can't, we just can't wait anymore. People are hurting every day. Uh, it was brought to my attention and then I, it became very obvious to me how many people we see walking across the New York State Bridge these days, how many bicycles we see on 101. And, uh, you know, I don't have anything documented, but I know very well that's because those folks have no other way to get where they need to go because it used to be us. So we're putting the two new routes in as quickly as we can now that we can afford it. Um, and because of the short time, I think staff's come up with a good plan to accommodate the, the change period of those people that have changed their work schedules and school schedules. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Jennifer. Really excited. Really good news. Really good news. Now I can take the bus to the board meeting. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, yes. Rebecca, you want to go right? I would like to check out that special route there that accommodates the hospital. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's all exciting news. Shall we go on to 10D, which is on page 158, Charles? 158. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah. Um, we have uh, we have our TAC transportation advisory committees. Uh, here and in Tillamook, and historically, our executive director served on the uh, TAC committee in Tillamook, and their executive director served on the TAC committee here, because one of the one of the positions is supposed to be the leader from another uh, transit property, and both of those people are not uh, in the mix anymore. So I've asked Mary to go over with you this morning the process. Uh, and, and you all's responsibility in making those committees whole again, or at least our tech. Okay, um, so we're down several people on the committee. We usually have nine, and uh, since uh, um, Paul did call Brian Vitulli, how do you say his last name, Vitulli? That's good. Okay, <laughs> Vitulli down in, uh, Tillamook, he has said that he would join the TAC committee, which is great. Um, so, but now we have uh, the Chris Breitmeyer loss of him. And then we, I, I'm thinking that there's another person that is on our committee that has not been well, and I've tried to call her many times, and I'm not getting an answer from her. So I'm thinking we have her as well. So the way I'm looking at it right now, we're down three people, and they would represent um, educational, low income, and human services. So how we usually do this is I send out a uh, public uh, press release that asks for volunteers. And so basically asking the board if I can do that, so we can go ahead and proceed. This is the two year terms, of most of them. Yeah, for this committee. And the, this is the committee that of course approves um, grant planning, they, they pre-approve what we're going to ask for they, they have to, and bring a lot of input to that. So. Thank you, Mary. Um, I would entertain a motion in a second, then we can discuss. I, I move to uh, go ahead and uh, invite to have uh, Mary pursue this. Uh, to add the uh, three two-year terms for those areas. I second it. And discussion, Charles? No, that was late to sign it, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, any discussion on this? I think we're ready to vote, right? Okay. Commissioner Bruce Smith? Yes. Commissioner McDonald? Yes. Commissioner Nino? Sorry. Commissioner Lakeman? Yes. Commissioner Withers? Yes. Commissioner Reed? Yes. Commissioner Merrill? Yes. Thank you. All right. Um, we're down to 10E, which is the executive.
executive session. So I will now recess the public meeting. The Board of Commissioners of Sunset Empire Transportation District will now meet in executive session for the purpose of considering the employment of a public officer, ORS 192.660-2A. Representatives of the news media and designated staff shall be allowed to attend the executive session. All other members of the audience are asked to leave the room. Representatives of the news media are specifically directed not to report on any of the deliberations during the executive session, except to state the general subject of the session as previously announced. No decision may be made in the executive session at the end of the executive session, we will return to open session and welcome members back to the, back. Welcome members of the public back to the room. Okay, okay guys, um, we're going to get started. The mentality, right? The, you know, the Tracy, are you ready? Yes. Yeah. He's, he's in the cookies again. Am I ready, but I'm not? Are you ready, but you're not? Yeah, I'm in the cookies And again. Jason, are we good? We are currently ready to go. Okay. I'm calling the, our meeting back to order. And is there any action from our executive board meeting? Uh, Madam Chair, um, I would move that the board appoint Craig Johnston as executive director of Sunset Empire Transportation District, contingent on the successful negotiation of an employment agreement, acceptable reference check, and background screening. And as background, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, no you're going to second it. We'll second? Yeah. And as background, Miles has turned down our offer to him. Um, is there any discussion? Mary, would you take a roll call vote, please? Commissioner Bushman? Yes. Commissioner McDonald? Yes. Commissioner Allegria? Yes. Yes. Commissioner Withers? Enthusiastic, yes. Commissioner Reed? Yes. Mr. Romero? Yes. Passes? All right. Um, I think we'll reach out to soon. All right. We'll go on to number 11, correspondence. Can we do um, Mary's? Number 11 on the agenda, which is page 159. I thought we missed Mary. Mary's. Is, is this? This is you, your report, correct? Yes, but it's in there. Was that sweet? <laughs> oh, you didn't give it. You didn't. Yeah, we haven't got that far yet. We haven't got there. Oh, we haven't got there. Oh, okay. yeah, we're, we're getting there. Sorry. <laughs> the journalist is. Mine's the last report. So. <laughs> Did I <laughs> throw this off? You want me to sit over there? To keep him in line. So we do this is from. Oh. Can I talk about this for a minute and your correspondence? Yes. This is this, of course. Yes. So just a reminder that I don't know how many have attended this before, but this is a wonderful opportunity to meet with other uh, community leaders, etc. But then and also get educated about how things run in the forestry. Wonderful. So don't do we do one of these already this yes. year? Yes. Not this year, last year and the year last year. year. Every year. Was it that long? It was that long ago. Yes, yes. Yeah. It's every year. Okay. And over 10 years they've been doing it. It's wonderful. And I, I did it last year. I think Rebecca and Charles, you did. And I've done it previously. Do you meet in that class? It's here. It's here. They, they meet at the, uh, Make sure they the uh, forestry. They, they meet, they take, put you on a bus, and they take you on a tour. and they. No, but where do they meet? At the, to the children. There's information on here about how to contact them. Last time was at children's. Bob Chisholm. Chisholm. Oh, yeah, last year it was at the Bat Bob Chisholm. Okay. Yeah, if you go in and to the website, then you can go down They usually meet at the Forestry Center, but if it's at Bob Chisholm, mm -hmm. no, yeah. at the Forestry Center. Okay. They, they meet at like Fort Clatsop. No, Clatsop 
fairground. Sorry. See, that was a that's usually one. where they meet. That was a, that's their office right now. Yes, and then that's where the tour begins. The great big presentation place. All right. Okay. Mary, do you, wanna, do you want to read our correspondence? Sure. I don't know what that that's what Paul said you wanted to. There's one on each side. Just so you know. Uh -huh. side. You're right. Sorry. <clears throat> County. I'd like to express my deep appreciation for your county support during these challenging times. Columbia County has demonstrated its community mindedness during Sunset Empire Transportation District's difficult fiscal crisis by lending its transportation director, John Driesen, to help us figure out our predicament and work toward a more solid financial footing. John's expertise in transportation and finance has been an invaluable resource as we come to terms with our new reality. With John's help, we have been able to understand some of the practices which contributed to our problems and develop an affirmative approach to our financial recovery. John has helped us respond to our forensic audit and to gain a deeper understanding of reporting requirements while giving our staff a moral boost. On behalf of our board staff and staff and writers in Classic County, thank you again for sharing one of your best, Paula Wiki. Interim Executive Director, Sunset Empire Transportation. Response, Paul. John is definitely one of the best. We are glad he has been able to assist. Transit is a challenge for all of us, and we most definitely need to support one another. Thank you for stepping up and taking the lead for Sunset Empire. I will share this with the commission, with Commissioners Garrett and Smith. Sincerely, Margaret Magruder, Columbia County Commissioner. Okay. Next on our list is number 12, page 161. And yes, and that is the executive director's report. Okay. Really. Any questions of Paul? Pamela? Do you state that um you'll be rehiring and hiring new people totaling eight employees. So okay. the question is, where's the money coming from? I want to tell you that we have had several meetings about the money. I mean, it's about the money right now. Um, Kelly and Jennifer worked uh, several days to figure out exactly what it costs us to have a driver in the seat for an hour, uh, what it costs us for the support staff, the mechanic, the supervisor, um, how much are we already paying for a supervisor, so what's the difference to bring him back full time. Um, most of what we're doing was uh, anticipated when we, when we built the budget. We actually thought that we would add service maybe in January or later in the year. But with the funding that we receive, and quite frankly, the stiff money that we got from last year that in the beginning we weren't expecting, and the money that we got for reimbursements for the last two or three quarters of the last year, we didn't even figure that in our budget because we had no assurance we were ever going to get it. So there is room and the staff as a team feels comfortable that we can do what we're saying we're gonna do with the service. That's why we haven't uh, added warrant to that because in our analysis of what's going on, we realize that by adding warrant we have to add another driver at the expense of another bus. And that would put us in a situation where finances would have been tighter so everything that, that we're doing, which is the three fixed route drivers, an ADA uh, paratransit driver, and the supervisor back, add a mechanic, because we're down to one mechanic and we're adding buses, we need a mechanic. Uh, and we need a dispatcher. Jason and Jennifer and the supervisor out there are doing all of the dispatch for paratransit and their jobs. So we're adding another driver, we're gonna need that dispatcher. All those positions uh, are, are accommodated by the funds 
that we did put in the budget. So in a lot, that would be the amounts. What would be the uh, total amount, just generally? What we're adding comes to four hundred thousand dollars per year for the remainder of this year. So it's for eight months. And yes, we did look at next year. That's another reason why we haven't added Route 15 back, is that we not only have to make sure we can finish this year in the black, we have to make sure that we can sustain the service into next year. So uh, that's why we that's why we've chosen uh, what we've chosen to do. So the four hundred thousand is for the remaining fiscal year. Yes. So <clears throat> now, there's there's uh, some some light in there too. I'm still working with the city manager from Cannon Beach and I expect that Cannon Beach will contribute 60 or 70,000 to that 400,000. So that takes a little of this weight off of our backs. So then, so how, maybe you don't know the answer to this. So obviously we've had trouble with receiving ODOT financing in a timely manner. Uh, and whatever situation other than the hiring freeze has caused this, is there a possibility, well probably there is a possibility, but do you feel comfortable that payments won't be delayed to the extent that we can't pay these new employees or reinstated employees? I hope that you've seen that it's really important to me that you folks have all the information about what's going on. And I have to tell you that in the last few days, there have been some remarkable developments uh, with ODOT with respect to our situation. Um, we, were, we were in the center of the spotlight for several months. And our hands were tied. We were restricted from, from meeting with other people at ODOT. Uh, we were under strict instruction as to how to route our correspondence through different people at ODOT. Uh, and all of a sudden, over 72 hours, ODOT has lost interest in us. Um, I think that Kelly mentioned that we uh, took the remaining uh, funds from our loan this week. And I wrote a memo uh, asking for those funds. And the next day I had the form that Debbie signed that we sent in for those funds. Previously, we would have fought for a week to get that transaction done. Um, so I can't give you all the details because uh, I think it has to do with personalities and a lot of politics. But what I'm telling you is I don't think that we're going to run into funding timing problems anymore. We have one, one uh, outstanding payment that still has to be approved by the OTC, and that's our second quarter stiff payment for this year because we resubmitted our stiff plan and, and we got it through PTAC earlier this month, and it goes to OTC now in November for approval. And I believe they'll approve. But the payment was due to us in October, and ODOT now has decided they're not going to give us that payment, even though those funds were partially approved with the initial stint plan. But they're not going to give us that second month payment until OTC approves the uh, updated stint plan. So that payment may be uh, a month late, or, or maybe even more. But I don't anticipate anything. I don't think we're going to run into any delays going forward that the rest of the rural properties of the state would run into. Uh, is this a change in personnel? Or? Uh, it's a rather fast turnover. It's, you know, I don't want to be too speculative here, but it, it kind of our consensus that whatever ODOT thought they were going to find by doing an audit here and by <laughs> holding us down, they didn't find. And there's and there's no percentage in them continuing 
to waste energy on us because as one of the presidents said or somebody said there's no there there no uh, we haven't had a chance to see the audit i think i mentioned that in my report the audit's done i've been told we've been told that there are findings but no one will tell us what the findings are um, i did write to the, the stiff administrator i guess that's who he is someone before yesterday that i was uh, discouraged from communicating too directly. And I asked him, uh, when is the audit going to be done? When will we get to see a draft? When will we get to know what the findings are so that we can make corrections? And so far, I haven't heard back from him yet. But I think, I may be naive, but I think the pressure's off. I think we're back to being SETD, and what we can do on our own, we can do it. We can do it well. I really appreciate this uh, discussion because uh, ODOT, I mean, if you don't have ODOT support, any transit center doesn't have ODOT support, you're in trouble. And um, it's, obviously there are problems and I just wanted to learn as much as possible so we can hear the money we spend and the budget we make if there are serious problems that we can't overcome. And I appreciate that you've uh, told us what they well, are. Well, good. And I, I don't want you to lose sight of the fact, however, that you all share some responsibility in this too. And I think that you've learned that through these last months and this financial training that you'll go through. There are things you need to look for and Kelly's gonna make sure that you see them and you get to say, hey, wait a minute, we're going the wrong direction or this is getting too close. Or, you know, there's there's seven of you, that's 14 eyes that can all look at this stuff and make some better assessments now than maybe you could before. Mm -hmm. So don't miss that opportunity. Don't worry. You know, Pam, you should always ask a question if you have one. <laughs> what are you doing? Don't worry, you don't do that. <laughs> Rebecca? Yeah, I, you know what, as you're chatting away after I put my card up, um, those were, that was the question that I had was, uh, you know, when you were talking about, you know, the delay in the, um, the ODOT monies, you know, but I think you kind of laid it out for us that, that uh, you're less fearful about those delays moving forward and that you're, there's more clarity and you're able to communicate with more people. I'm really glad to, to hear that. And that my second uh, comment was, was about the um, the audit, I'm, and it's a really important document for us moving forward. So um, I'm just hope that uh, you know they're going to grease the skids on that too, so we can get a hold of that. We really, we really need that. Well, it's been two or three weeks since Arla said she had the draft. It's been at least three weeks. And uh, and I uh, made a formal request <laughs> through Arla to that we'd be invited to the exit conference on that. Yes. And I was told that there would be no exit conference on that audit. And mm -hmm. I just find that hard to believe. I think that I was told that rather than told your your presence is not wanted at that audit conference. You mean you think it's perfunctory that it's not a, it's a non-issue or that we're, they, they're intentionally don't want us to be a part of that those are two different things well they didn't they didn't include us in the uh in the kickoff meeting they didn't let us see the scope of the audit they took all of our documents um, and then some um they they didn't share their progress they haven't shared their findings they haven't shared the draft um, i think that it didn't go the way they expected I think yeah. they would like it to die a natural death. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, Personal opinion. I we'll might go, be wrong. Hope, hope that's right. Well, they wouldn't have sent us money. It was, it was still <laughs> yeah. they would say, they didn't rob me. They said, send us some more money to rob us. They wouldn't yeah. send them more money. Guillermo? Uh, uh, the fiscal year runs July through July, right? July. Okay. Uh, June through July. 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 June through June. July. And based on my experience, I, I, I think it's a good sign that uh, 
that uh, they're not regarding the audit. They're not imposing certain things. I think that's a good indicator. I think so. Yeah. I think, I think before commenting, I just that we actually see it black and white. <laughs> I'm just a little uh, Tracy. And I have to share. I wanted to share with you guys about the uh, thawing of the atmosphere um, uh, related to our um, northwest uh, transit area. Um, I got a letter. Yesterday, um, I had submitted that I would be available to do an, uh, an employee uh, interview. And so I sent that the day before yesterday. And on the next day, I got a, uh, we will be seeing you next Thursday. Please let me know if you have any questions. Sam Evans, executive support for uh, Region 20. So. And it's like, it's like a silver thaw. Mm. What is this about, Tracy? Northwest Act is that they would they would like two representatives from each act throughout the state in interviews for the new director for Region Two, which is our region. So, and so. Oh, I couldn't get that. Oh, are we Region One? We are Region Two. Region Two. Yeah. Can you send that to me? Yes. Okay. So, okay. Um, anything else for anything else for Paul? Thanks, Paul. Okay. Uh, website? Yes. Thank you. I was hoping you were going to talk great about that. We have been fighting for two months now to recover our website. Mm -hmm. The website is northwestoregontransit.org. That's where you that's where you landed if you use ride the bus. The the uh, ownership of that website expired. Uh, no, the owner did. <laughs> the license to that website expired <laughs> uh, because a credit card expired and there was the, it wasn't renewed. And so the website went down and it took several people weeks to find out who it was that really owned that website. Turned out to be an employee of a company that that no longer exists. It was the company that Nawada began doing business with when Nawada was first formed. And the websites are bought through a, a company called GoDaddy.com. Oh, yeah may be aware of and they have such tight security that if they if you want to get in they send you a code an authorization and if you don't have that code you don't get in and that code is going to whoever that employee was of that company that no longer exists so we can't get in uh, for momentarily our our traffic was rerouted to northwestconnector.org and now, for some reason, that's broken down too. But I'll tell you, the people working on this have gone so far as to hunt down the ex-wife of that employee, <laughs> hoping that she could give them a cell phone number to that person so they could call him, so they could get the code and get into the account. Without that, we're dead. So we have hired a broker to buy back our website when it becomes available. Uh, which is somewhere between 70 days and 18 years or something. <laughs> and we're willing to pay $500 to buy our website back after a certain time of it being um, unrequested, you know, being dormant, then it's up for sale again. So Kathy down at Tillamook, because Tillamook's the fiscal uh, agent for Nuwata. Kathy's been trying to get this taken care of. She hired the broker. She told the broker we'd pay $500 for our website when it became available. And I guess they found that it now belongs to somebody else. And she and the broker said that that person wants $10,000 oh. to give up our domain. So it's really getting uh, complex. And I just want you to know that many people are working on it. 
the hang up is godaddy.com and it comes at the worst time it can for us because the public already knows we're having some trouble and now when they go to look for our routes and our schedules they can't even get to our website uh, but it's the same for columbia tillamook and uh, lincoln and lane counties as well so just be aware because people are going to ask you how come i can't get your website and now you know why if we do ride the bus can't we get that because i swear i was just in there the other day but i don't i wasn't looking for routes so we can't get into any of it if you go ride the bus Sometimes it will take you to the northwestconnector.org. Okay. And we've been able to get into that so we can update that with public notices and stuff. Yeah. If I do Sunset Empire Transportation District, I can get into it. No. 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 Okay. Cool. But if you, do, if you do north, if you do nwconnector.org, yes. you can get into it. Should but that's not what it says on our bus. What does it say? I went to ride the bus dot org and it took me to the Okay, so, bus. so this part's been fixed. Um, yeah, I've been able to get that that's far. That's so our side. I used ride the bus dot org yeah. to get here. Can we just tell just everybody that, that that's the pathway? I mean, we to yeah. advertise that that's our website <clears throat> address. Years ago, it used to be ride the bus. Now, if you look on our buses, it says Northwest <laughs> Transit, Oregon Transit .org. Can we just put some new stickers? <laughs> we just put a sticker over that. Yeah, yeah, the, the group is kind of yes. arguing, why don't we just go with the other website? But it's in print media. It's in 7,200 links throughout the internet. Links from other sites to us. Uh, and I forget, they've got a name for that kind of a link. But Nawada is printing a listing of those 7,200 websites that have our link on them and going to distribute it to the agencies and have us go through. And if we see like a, a college or a hospital or some major employer, we'll let them know what has happened and get that link updated for those websites that they use. But it's a, it's a huge thing. It's a huge thing. That's all I have. Okay. Can I add one thing to that? In that meeting we had, they also said if you have a bookmark, uh, save. If your if your Google search is saving your track, you know it's going to automatically take to, take you to a page you no longer can locate. You have to clear your your history. yeah your cookies, your history, yeah. delete the bookmark. It all depends on which uh, Bing or Google search or Safari, if you can access it or not. And uh, so, it, yeah, you may get it one time, but are the second time because you're on a different uh, search. Oh, yeah, a uh, different a device. Yeah, Maybe different the device. new owner is willing to negotiate the ten thousand dollar. You no, know, honestly, I'm gonna I'm gonna suggest to them today that they consider paying the ten thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. And and the 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 to change yeah. everything. And yeah, then not just sitting that. waiting for something that may not happen. Yeah. How many, how many folks? It's us, Lake City, Columbus, six. Columbus, Columbia, how many districts? Five. Every, five. Everything in Columbia five. County. I've been as well before. <laughs> Be better off. Because if they think you want, you'll pay the 10 and they'll, they'll raise it up. Get it quick. They think you, yeah. you want it. But it's bad. It's, I've been yeah. as well with a company I work for before. The best price you're going to get right now. They're not going to lower it. Just, just for your information, if you don't know, there are people who uh, it's their business to keep an eye on websites and what they see with yeah. web domain names. And when they see one that looks good, they'll take it. They'll buy it because they're cheap, thirty dollars a year or something. You yeah. can have the domain name, and then they'll wait for somebody who needs it, uh, and they'll sell it to them for thousands or tens of thousands of dollars. Early on, before the, uh, not that early, Exxon.com, somebody bought it. Exxon, like a lot of companies thought, well, okay, then that's kind of cute. Okay. But when they wanted it, somebody got like mil millions of dollars from yeah. Exxon to get it, because somebody wanted it. It's not worth much until someone starts asking for it. Then it starts a bidding, it's a bidding. I'm not saying we're gonna go that high, but 10,000, Probably not bad deal. It's probably our easiest way out, right? <laughs> yeah. Now, which is only going to be two thousand dollars an agency. Yeah. Right. 
Probably not too bad. Moving on to Jennifer. She had a big report earlier. <laughs> questions for her you want to add anything to your report yeah i just wanted to add uh thank you for going over the website because it's it's a lot to try to understand and keep track of and it's changing every day so uh, yeah um jason and i had a zoom meeting with caroline chris senior transportation with odot about um if you haven't noticed traveling here today we are down to one lane in astoria um, northbound, southbound, um, and so because of that, we cannot access the bus shelter in front of um, the unemployment office, DHS. DHS. Um, it is one lane. It was already kind of a tricky shelter to stop at uh, when it was two lanes. It was extremely narrow, and to have a commercial rig, log truck, semi truck go by the transit bus while they're um, loading or unloading a mobility device made it very uh, nerve-wracking for a driver and, and the rider um, to, to load safely and, and get out of that um, spot because it cannot get out of the lane there. There is no pullout there. So I have now, um, with approval, we have shut that bus shelter down uh, during construction and it is still inaccessible because they have kept the one lane um, and they will be, it's a two-year project, pilot project. Um, <clears throat> so we had a meeting, we talked to her, she took all the concerns. Um, we mentioned to her we would like ODOT to move that bus shelter uh, to uh, where it moves to two lanes at a location that's safer um, to load and unload, uh, but also uh, helpful to our riders too. We don't want to take them to um, a location that's, uh, you know, out in the uh, not accessible or can't cross the highway there. Um, they have put in two modular crosswalks there in the turn lane in the center. So as you leave here today, you may notice they have cones out and those are the projected modular crosswalks there. Um, ODOT did tell us that there's plenty of room for us to stop at the DHS with commercial rigs to utilize the turn lane to get around the transit bus. And I said, I was not comfortable with that. Having have my CDL driven school bus, driven transit as a driver there to me is not enough room and it's not comfortable uh, safety um, to stop and impede traffic. They're merging, um, you know, right here at the corner and where are we? <laughs> of North 9th Street right here. And I'm really surprised we had a meeting yesterday. Mm -hmm. And and they hear it all day when they're working here, the amount of traffic that's cutting off um, the commercial rigs right here, coming into the one lane, um, going around the cones and re-entering back into the one lane, cutting off traffic. And so they're fighting for their space, and then they're going to approach a bus that stopped in the lane and probably not have enough time or space in the turn lane to get back into the lane before they get to the crosswalk. So we are going to continue to keep that, unfortunately, keep that shelter closed until we can come to a, an agreement on where to move it. Um, I did tell them that there is, it's a heavily access area. They need those services that across the street, they, uh, they change the Columbia a motel um, mm -hmm. into the homeless housing. And so it's very unfortunate uh, that this is <clears> happening. Uh, so hopefully through the pilot, they'll, they'll, we're gonna write a letter. Um, we've talked about um, making a 30 minute clip of near misses, five second near misses um, from the cameras on our bus. Um, so then it does turn into two lanes once you're leaving um, Astoria headed into the roundabout then coming towards into Astoria from the roundabout into Astoria, it's two lanes down to one lane uh, at the corner of Columbia and the El Tapatio restaurant. There is a cutout there. We can access that bus stop with the Route 101. And so they can safely get out of the traffic, uh, load and unload. They will have to fight for their space. And we are, you know, larger, so we will safely, with our yield signs legally, get to re-enter traffic. They are to yield to traffic, uh, transit uh, buses. We will stop at the stop sign, then it continues that 
you know, one lane is one lane before it gets to pig and pancake. We have about 200 feet. Barely that. Yeah, to, to do that. Um, so I'm hoping that that's going to get reconfigured before they um, make that final. And then it's one lane until um, you get to 8th Street. Did you say how long that uh, traffic configuration is going to last? It's a two-year pilot, <laughs> so it might be final uh, until it is a restriping, as that's what she called it, a restriping project. So it's uh, not, no lights are involved. They haven't changed the timing on the lights. That might end up being part of the project. She took all of our notes, our, our concerns and requests down, um, and so we're hoping Maybe with joint efforts of the county and the, the cities, you know, city of Astoria. Um, I know they've had challenges, um, emergency response. Um, now can't use the turn lane with the, the modular <laughs> crosswalks in the turn lane. Emergency responders can't use that now. So there are some challenges with other um, others involved. So and seasonally adjusted traffic mm. coming off a bridge and deadlock. The system it's already it happened to my wife we are we are at a standstill i told them since the day it started friday last week at a standstill from the um, columbia avenue uh, intersection to the roundabout mm -hmm. and they never contacted us so. well let's be fair <laughs> what i hear is that they did reach out to the district and the district didn't respond so it was not a part of the discussions as this this was over the last couple of years, I would think. Okay. Oh, Pamela, one can that be uh, changed or stopped if uh, after the two year pilot study? That would be an ODOT question. Yeah, I'm not sure. We, um, well, Jason? They're, they're, they're bought and sold on doing this because this isn't so much about this, might have been a plan 10 years ago, but when the unfortunate passing of an individual just recently happened there. They sped this up quite, quite quickly to get to this point. So they're pretty solidified in this plan. I'm just hoping that through continued efforts to communicate with them and to show them the examples of what's going on, that might at least well, after the pilot, they might be able to, to edit it. Yeah. Okay. And, the, and the other question I have is um, <coughs> with REMAC, Next, excuse me, um, data driven. And what is the data <coughs> that you collect from that? So, uh, changing gears here. So, that was an ODOT project um, years ago. It is a GTFS, um, it's a system you can work in. Before, it was just a route planning program. You can do dreams and wishes on there and put your best stops, and um, it's a web based system. Uh, now they've made it part of, um, oh, I'm losing my thought here. Um, Is it VIA? Yes, VIA. And so it we have now, uh, so when I do a route like this, or we have done routes, we have to send this information, the schedule, to Trillium, who does then organizes the GTFS, which puts it on our website and it tells a rider where we're going, it has the map, it, it speaks to Google, and it shows the little bus icon on Google Maps, and you can click on the, all of, all these, the GTFS is all plugged together. Um, <clears throat> and communicating through Transit app, our website, uh, Google Maps um, to a rider. Now we have Direct Connect with the Remix. We get to go in there, do the route planning, and then make it live. Um, and so this is a, we get direct access, we get to play with it, and then we get to utilize it and, uh, and um, tweak it. So like we are putting on new routes, now we'll get to go in there and update it more realistic. We know that we need three more minutes to get to Fred Myers. I can just go in there and change it rather than giving it to Trillium, waiting six weeks <laughs> to get it on the website, to have it um, affect the transit app for the riders thinking we're getting there at 12.08 and we're actually only getting, you know, we've had to adjust it 
Um, and it drives the driver's tablets too. Yes, and it does. Yeah, it all. Yeah, the driver tablets have a uh, you're on time, the Swiftly app, and it tells the driver you're on time or you're four minutes a ahead. Um, and then they wait. Yeah, so there's a lot involved. Um, there's a lot to learn. Um, I haven't got a lot of. Um, it was just kind of always mentioned in trainings like, oh, you could go here and do transit planning. Uh, people go to college for this <laughs> and uh, learning as you go. So I'm going to Salem at the end of October and I get to do this uh, uh, one day live, one on one. Um, there's 30 of us um, class and uh, ODOT's putting it on. So it's, it's, um, it's pretty exciting for me. And the mm -hmm. other question is around um, the Seaside Cinema, which is, uh, I guess, well, sort of a pioneer trail in terms of it uh, lacks uh, some smooth surface which cuts down on the performance of the, um, of the bus. Is there any future in uh, correcting that? Is that a city of seaside? I'm not sure. You're talking about all the potholes? Yeah, <laughs> I've, I've been addressing that. Um, I have the public works director who's in charge of the transportation advisory committee has been made aware several times and I continue to ask him to throw some gravel or some asphalt in those holes. Probably asphalt because when it rains, and the parking, gravel, I'm not gonna so cut. yes, they're still there, but, but that doesn't I mean, mean yeah, that we don't stop probably. asking. Okay. Right. Thank you. Yeah, we we we're continuing to ask. <laughs> thank you. Um, <laughs> Drivers, thank you. <laughs> and, and yes. I just asked the commissioner as well down there to see if I can see what address it. I thought that it's uh, terrible. I don't know if it's just the landscaping around it or if it's that that parking lot that they passed through, but the um, I think the cinema and the um, outlet mall. Years ago, somebody told me that they they had a joint uh, ownership of that area, and that's why I think they fight over who's not responsible for the upkeep. But you're saying that it's ODOT. I no, the no. city of Seaside. Yeah. City of Seaside. <laughs> city of Seaside. Well, anyway, it's not. It's a, it's a stub end. Yeah. Rebecca, it's a stub end yeah. of fourteenth. And okay. the right. portions so of the holes are on fourteenth, and portions are on property. Okay. Yeah. And we're we're okay. trying to clarify okay. who's going to pour in the asphalt. Yeah. So. Sometimes it's almost so big, it almost loses us. So. Yeah. <laughs> Tracy yeah. on top, and we thank you, Tracy, for coming yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. We'll we'll get it one of these days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anything else for Jennifer? Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. For you, any yeah. questions that you want to add anything? Um, I am working on the emergency plan, and our safety committee is going to be reforming after the um, getting our inspections done for the third quarter. Um, and I will be bringing an updated emergency plan. I actually went over it, um, and it, it looks pretty good. I'm going to be making some tweaks to it. So anyway, and then doing some drills, <laughs> which a lot of times that goes undone. So I think it's very important when we have our, our new employees um, to go over that with them during onboarding. So I always <coughs> include it, but I think I'm going to go over that. I don't know. Okay, anything for Sue? Thank you. Yep. Okay. Jason. Jason Jones. Uh, well, I, I don't really have much uh, to offer other than I think everybody's hit a little bit of everything that I'm working with or have trying to help out in. So got any questions for me? I'm, I'm here. Any questions for Jason? You know, Jason won't toot his own horn, but you worked very hard on this uh, Zoom hardware and software. <laughs> you know, we used to have pretty regular technical problems, couldn't even get connected to that. So the camera that we had and some of the other hardware uh, was out of warranty and there was no service available for it. So through his research, he found a way to lease 
that camera and the hardware with Zoom baked into the hardware. So we don't have to worry about it, another piece of hardware. And uh, if that camera breaks, they just give us another one. And if there's upgrades, they just take care of the upgrades. And clearly it works. So yeah. that was a lot of work you put into that, a lot of sweat. Unfortunately. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, I don't think the claps were picked up on the <laughs> 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 and I'd, I'd like to just mention that you know, look at all the all the times that the staff is working collaboratively with each other mm -hmm. on all lot. of this, and, and this this amazing. Thank you. Yes, thank you. We have a really good staff. Team. Mary Parker. Before you start. What are you <laughs> to Mary Parker. Before Mary Parker be starts, I want to thank her for everything oh, she does, goodness. for putting together all the th stuff for our meet and greet, for the interviews, for you just don't know everything she does behind the screen. She helps me on the board with many things. No, you can't do that. Um, without her, uh, I'm not sure where I would actually be. But I know she does a lot for the staff also. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Sometimes it seems well, like that. Yeah. 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 Personality, that's true. Well, well, they kind of bad, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I appreciate so it. I, I want to speak to just a little bit of that. I mean, there are times that that I've had in my health issues or something that I've missed an email or I've not done what I'm supposed to do or responded. And if I have a question, I call her. And she always answers the phone and she's always cheerful. And she says, yeah, we can fix that. Okay, and we do. So I appreciate that very much. Yeah, on the weekends, if I'm there, I'll answer. Because I know it's important. I know it's always important. Um, but um, I don't really have a lot to say except um, it was. It's been really fun. Um, it was fun to have that meet and greet here. It was really fun. Yeah. And how many staff came and and the the sincerity of the staff um, in talking with the, with the finalists. It was it was wonderful. Um, but I have had. I was just gonna. I, was, I wrote down how many um, executive directors I've worked for. Uh, since 2010 and been part of the hiring process, if you would, just helping out with it, but then <coughs> the orientation as well. And so this is exciting to start again because those fresh eyes and fresh, um, what they bring is always very helpful to us. We have only had, you know, haven't had any real negative situations, but it's always new eyes, new, new ideas. Wonderful. Just wonderful. I'm looking forward to that, and I thank you very much for um, appreciate you. I appreciate your appreciation. <laughs> so, um, Mary, in our previous talkings with um, doing uh, things as far as notices at the um, transit stations and shelters, I would like to propose that as we move forward in our new times that we repurpose some of the collective green space um, at the shelters um, to include more, I want to say community, but also first and foremost, information about the routes in our county, not regionally, okay? I would be more than happy to work with you on that. And I really think that it's something that we need to do. And we need to make it more for the community and less about how many we, interconnections that we can make. Okay. We have policies about what we can put in our shelters. That's and good. so that would start with the board. Yeah. Our policy has been that no one else but us really yeah. markets in that or advertise or does outreach in our, in our shelters to Less than the confusion of the message being given. So, if that's something, it's 
it's certainly out of my hands. It's right. it's it's in the board's hands if you want to start allowing. We we want to discuss that. Okay. Yes, next okay. next month we're going to get into board policies. We're going to yeah. revisit yeah. that. So. But that's when, why there isn't other outreach or mm -hmm. other links. Oh, just our stuff and the connector information. Except for in Cannon Beach, where the Tillamook bus routes are in the shelter in Cannon Beach and in Midtown. So, okay. Anything else from anybody else? Any objections to adjourning the meeting? Aye. Okay. okay. Meeting is adjourned at 11.50. Oh boy.